so thank you. Um, uh, my name is Rita Val, and I'm professor, and this is Professor David Patient. We are both professors at Catholic Lisbon, right on the other side of the, of the street. I believe we will be the ones offering you some drinks this afternoon, so just because of that, you should like us, I think. <laughs> so we are here today to present one of our, well, we would say like at this moment, one of our most customized leadership training programs that we developed at our school. Uh, and uh, it's a, it was a program together with Sense China Integrated Resorts, and basically we will try we'll try to explain the type of program that we developed, the type of challenge that we faced, and what were the learnings at the end. So what were the outcomes? What have we learned? What have we learned from this? We promise to to uh, offer you you know lots of interesting stories, and we have a very nice video to show you to show you at the end, and uh, that hopefully will really describe the kind of challenge that we faced. So, uh, sorry, we are just figuring out how this works. Wonderful. So, first thing, let me first introduce you to the company. So, this is not a fake picture. This is really Macau. This is the modern part of Macau. And basically what happened was that we were approached by Sense China a couple of months ago. And Sense China had a big challenge. They wanted to develop this customized, fully integrated uh, learning program. And Sun China, just to give you an idea, is the leading developer, owner, and operator at Macau. They own five big resorts, extraordinary resorts. So this is the kind of the sightseeing that you get when you are getting the ferry from Hong Kong to Macau. You see Sands all over the place. And Sands owns the Venetian Macau, which is a kind of a high-scale kind of resort. They even have their own canals with the gondolas in there, so they really try to replicate Venice in their, in their infrastructure, in their facilities. They have the Sands Macau, which was originally the first one. It was the first resort that was developed in there. It's really amazing to look at this picture, especially us, that we have been there already several times. When we think that this was implemented back in 2004, and that before that, this was a swamp. So nothing existed in that area. And now suddenly, you know, 15 years later, we have this kind of, we have this kind of sightseeing when we, are, when we are getting the ferry. So it's really impressive to see the kind of infrastructure that were built in there. So they have the Sands Macau, they have the Plaza Macau, they developed the Sands Cotai Central, which is a combination of many, many different hotels. That's where we had the pleasure to stay in, Holiday Inn, Conrad. They also managed the Cheriton that it's uh, uh, placed in there. And then finally they have the famous Parisian Macau. And Parisian, it's really famous because they were able to come up with a life-sized Eiffel Tower. So wherever you are in that, uh, in that part of Macau, you can always take a picture with the Eiffel Tower on the back of you and changing the lights and so on. So really shows the kind of uh, the impressive kind of work that they did in there. To give you an idea, they have 28,000 employees working for them in these five integrated resorts. So it's really a very big, large company. We had the opportunity to visit the back office, or well, the, I call it the underground city, that exists because all the buildings are uh, reachable, so they are connected from the underground. And it's really impressive to see how does a company manage 25,000 employees in one single space. You know, it's not that they are spread across multiple locations. They are in there with uh, 28,000. So they also own, just to uh, give you an idea, that they don't focus just in terms of the resorts. They also have Kotai Expo. This was one of the main goals from the beginning. So the, the, the CEO, the owner of Sense China, from the beginning, he came from this part of the business and he wanted to come up with the largest convention center in Asia. They also own the Kotai Arena. They have several theaters. And together with that, they have the Kotai Water Jet. And they also own their own private jet company. So we are talking about you know, this, uh, 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 the, the, the original, it's in Las Vegas. We are talking about this big multinational, uh, large upscale kind of company. Old, can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Old, although Macau was Portuguese for many years, okay, for, for almost five centuries, um, it's, it's an environment, especially today, that was relatively new for the school. Okay, and, and, and so for us, it involved uh, several trips, lots of interactions, to, to learn about a business culture and about forming business relationships um, in a way that was different uh, for us. Um, but we were very enthusiastic to work with Sands China because the, the, the reckless gamble that, that Sheldon Adelson had, had started, um, which makes the Sands China casinos the largest in the world and, and which makes Macau also the largest gambling center in the world uh, by far, 
um, had, had not turned out to be a reckless disaster as predicted, but, but a huge success. Um, but it had also brought challenges uh, for the company. Um, in particular, the Chance China is not able to open additional properties in, in the near and probably in the medium term future. Um, so their growth has to come from the existing properties. Um, there's a lot of competition, okay, both, both in Macau and also in other Asian destinations. Um, and in Macau, from, from Macau entrants as well as the major uh, competitors in the world, um, being part of China also brings uh, unique economic, political, and, and regulatory challenges. And, and uh, for example, um, it was absolutely uh, essential that Sans China demonstrate to the Chinese government that they were training the local population to assume international leadership positions. Um, it's a very dynamic, very technological, very fast-changing industry, uh, the destination and resort industry. Um, and Macau has, has perhaps a uniquely tight and challenging labor market. It's, it's very difficult to get a visa to work in Macau. Um, the local population is, is small, and, and even for, for so-called immigrants from Hong Kong or China, um, they don't easily obtain a visa. Okay? And, and there's also a privileged position in Macau for, for workers and for, for managers who are from Macau originally. Um, and essentially what this means is every time that a new resort opens, it hires several thousand people and it hires hundreds of managers and they're competing for the same population. Okay? And, and the frustration of, of Sands China was that they felt like a training school or a finishing school for top talent, a lot of which would then leave uh, for their competitors when they opened the new property. Um, and so it's, it's important for them in this situation to, to be able to attract, to, to develop, to retain, and, and, and to motivate uh, employees generally, but especially the managers that are key to the success of their organization. And, and this was largely the reason uh, for launching this program. Um, this is Antonio Ramirez. He's, uh, he's originally Portuguese. He's been in, uh, in Macau for about 15 years. Okay? So he's been in, involved in this project from the beginning and is the HR uh, or in charge of HR for Sands China. The challenge he brought to us is, is to, to build on, on their tradition of training people and valuing people and being pioneers in some respects, but, but to come up with a program that had several strong characteristics. Um, this would bring together between 25 and 30 managers from across the business units. Okay? When you see the video, they look very young. They're not as young as they look because, because a lot of them, I mean, lucky them, they, they, they look in their, their, their 20s, they're in their 30s, but a lot of them are vice presidents, they're senior directors in their organization, and they manage hundreds of people. Okay? On the other hand, they are often operating in silos, and so they needed to have contacts and also to understand the business from a broader perspective. Um, they needed state-of-the-art insights into the resort industry, and many of them had not left Asia or, or Macau specifically. Um, the group that, that, that we trained were considered the high potential local employees that, that they're hoping will assume the management positions because at the highest level, the, the very top managers, with the exception of, of the CEO of Sands China, um, are still European and North American managers. Um, they wanted to bring an international perspective and also provide an experience that would keep these people in the company, okay, and, and, and keep them motivated and have them, you know, direct the rest of their career towards Sands China. Okay, let me briefly explain the program in the end and we will show you the video because we think, you know, one image, uh, it's worth 1,000 words. So, Sands China, the program that we developed, that we proposed them, was a strategic international leadership program. We did partnership with two schools and we proposed to offer training in three different continents. So, basically, we started in Macau, where we did a partnership with the University of St. Joseph, local university, local training. This was something highly valued. Then we moved them to Europe. We offered them training here at Catholica, mostly based on leadership. We took them also, second or third week, we went to Cornell University in the US. We chose, we partnered with the best hospitality school 
in the world to offer state of the heart, state of the art, you know, top kind of training. And we designed this program in such a way that would allow them to not just be exposed to multiple cultures, which was something really important, also to be exposed to multiple contents in different facilities, which for them was something that was that was highly valued. So we offer them in three continents, three different schools. We partner with top schools, and basically in each school we offered specialized training, which was something also very important. In which week that we offered them, we had a five-week training multiple in some locations like Macau and in Lisbon, two, two times. You know, we offered them specialized training, really specific. In the case of University of St. Joseph, we focus on local business and political specificities. The Asian market, I must tell that I love. We, Macau was Portuguese for a long time. We land in Macau, we see everything written in Portuguese and in Chinese, but it's a totally different culture. So, total different country, culture, totally different way of doing business. We do, even the, the participants themselves, they have multiple cultures also. They need to be exposed to uh, the kind of specificity, specificities of Chinese uh, uh, business culture, of specificities, specificities of Macau culture. So, University of St. Joseph was the one offering, it, offering this. Then we move them to Catholica. They come to Europe. You know, for them by itself, for just to go, just to come to Europe was something extraordinary. We brought them here at Catholica, and here we offer them one full intensive week of leadership and change management. And then we took them to Cornell for a very strong and intense week on strategic hospitality. Well, and we ended up again the program in Macau. Importantly, and we are running a little bit out of time, so I want to be brief on this. We had an integrated challenge that was from the first day until the last day, you know, one of the core things of the program. So in the, on the, the first week that we were with them in Macau, the participants were, uh, had the possibility of choosing a topic they wanted to work on that was related with some of the needs that they considered to be more critical until the last week where they presented their suggestions, their recommendations, their group project to the board. So it was something which was the wow factor of the program. If I would have to describe one wow factor was the end of the program with the presentations to the board. And now, before we go, I think we should uh, uh, put the video on. Do you mind just putting the video that we gave you? Sorry. I thought the program was amazing. Um, it was a chance for me to take myself out of the organisation and, you know, look at it from a different perspective. I mean, we're always uh, very busy with day to day. So this was a great opportunity for me. And, you know, it was to see how we actually benchmark against our competitors in an international level. So that was what was very important to me. You know, in reality is that this course actually is a few months program, but we need to do all the things in a few months. Like we have project, we need to go to study, and then we have a lot of courses. And I think the professor really did very good on that because, you know, they have different things to educate us and then show us the real life example by case study or go through the video. We contact Catholica and they accommodate our needs. So it's a tailor-made program for our industry and specific for our company. It's a very good program because it allows people to go um, to university here in Macau, university in Lisbon, Catolica, and then in New York with Cornell. So that was the rationality behind. We receive a lot of uh, feedback from the participants, very positive ones. Everybody was excited. Uh, about the program and I think that the most important piece is that people are not only excited because of the program but they are excited with uh, the possibilities that the program opens. We didn't want this to be a pure academic uh, exercise. We wanted the people to feel that what they learn can happen in, in the real world. This was a program with the highest cultural differences so for us it was also a challenge to learn. It was the first program that we had in Asia 
and it was a program that we ran across three different schools in three different continents. So this means that we had to adjust the contents and we had to customize the program in such a way that the participants would have the best experience possible in each of these settings. We, we also wanted participants to have enough time and space to, to step back from their day-to-day -day jobs and, and to take new approaches. There were several other challenges. We, we, we wanted to develop a program that, that was really tailored to integrated resorts. And that meant bringing together several partners. Uh, one was we needed somebody who really understood the local context um, and the Chinese market. And so we worked together with the University of St. Joseph. Our expertise at Catolica is, is more in training uh, in leadership and strategy. And so when it came to the hospitality industry, um, we approached the best. And, uh, and Cornell University was able to bring new insights into that. Five months have come to an end rather too quickly. As you say, time flies when you're having fun. So it was really a great experience for us. And uh, we as a team have been able to take away a lot of things from this program. Apart from the learning from, from the wonderful professors that we had, um, it's really about collaborating with other departments. I've never worked with this group of people in a big project, 25 people from different departments, that's not an easy task to do, uh, coming from different business sectors, uh, just working together with the same goal, understanding their point of view, making good results throughout the project. I feel very proud of the participants. Um, I feel curious about what we're going to do in the future. Actually, I think it exceed my expectation. I, di I didn't realize before that the professor actually share about the China inside. I did enjoy to understand the different cultural environment. So I think it exceeds definitely my expectation. So this program has definitely opened my eyes uh, from a global perspective. What they're really doing internationally rather than what we do, it's yeah, our customer, sure, it's, it's China, but maybe we can take some of these, you know, research that all these universities are doing and implement it into Asia and Macau and, and China. So to really increase our, you know, business, revenue and profit. With that, uh, yes, it's the end of the program, but it's the start of something new and uh, many more great things to come. And for sure, the company will benefit a lot from this. Okay, just to wrap up, um, the good news is that we're going to continue working with Sands China. We're working on the next edition, we're fine-tuning it, we're thinking of bringing in more coaching, uh, some new sessions, okay, um, maybe fewer sessions and longer sessions, and, and in other ways, uh, we're, we're trying to build on this year's model, but, but there's some things that we, we think led to its success, okay, so the high degree of customization, which, which really involved living with the customer to some extent and, and spending time with them and understanding them. Um, with them, we worked to make sure that the content that we were going to uh, apply was, was relevant to their situation. Um, we established two new partnerships. In fact, Catholic Lisbon has lots of great partnerships, so we're lucky in that regard. But we went out and we tried to choose the partners that would be the best for this situation, okay? which is not the easiest thing to do. Um, but it paid off, and now they're parties that we can work with in the future. Um, we tried to bring an integrated perspective to people who, who prior to this, you know, were very specialized in their functions and their departments. Um, and we also had lots of, of cultural and networking opportunities so that the people had an enjoyable time, but could also, in these settings, really get to know each other. Um, this was a journey, and, and like a lot of journeys, it, it involved some risk. Um, but it involved a lot of learning, we think, for the participants, for SANS China, and, and also for us. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.